Here we are, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Rastafari. Now we lay the basic foundation in the first part of, of, of Noah, breaking down the Hebrew, the new car, the vowel, the, the holem, and the patach here, and the interesting um, rule of modern force Hebrew. But then we get to the Ethiopic and we get to the root. It's noch. And noch connects with the ankh. With the ankh. Right? Which has a meaning of of, of, of length of, of life, of longness and length. They have the idea of length, but in the sense of longness. Or, or also we can say lineage. Lineage is connected. And the mountain, a mountain is often used in the etymology, the Ethiopic etymology of, this, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the Ethiopic root of Noah, which is Anecha uh, 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 or Anocha. Uh, Anocha, anecha. I think I said anecha before. That's a, that's the root of anocha, actually. But not to get too much into the into the um, linguistics, unless they are explaining the teaching. You see, because we can go from the linguistics and just you know just get into linguistics, but it will have no practical application. Now we're dealing with the mo of Noah in our second Torah portion reading and feeding. What we what we address was the first verse. The first, uh, the, the first verse of this Torah portion, this parsha or bamarinya in them heart, this kufl. The Jews say parsha, koparsha means kufl, and kufl means a portion. So in this first portion, which is Genesis 6 and 9, the complete is Genesis 6 and 9 to Genesis 11 and 32. So please um, um, uh, remember the Shabbat, the Senbet. And, and keep it holy, keep it set apart, at least to go over and study and get a basic familiarity with the matters contained therein. So the verse that we read was, these are the generations of, of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Then we went to define a little bit more of what walking with God means metaphysically, and in spirit and in truth. So that Christ, our black Lord and Savior, he teaches us that God is a spirit and those who, who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So to walk with God is to walk in a spirit of truth. To walk in the spirit of truth. But in order to understand and recognize with the spirit of truth, one must recognize the law or Torah or the orit, the root, which is the the first developmental, the first developmental um, um, region, the first developmental teaching is, is, is the law angels, and there's four law angels, and we're going to discuss more what these four law angels are. But they, they link with our seven chakras, the first four, from the root to the heart chakra. The heart chakra is the Christ chakra. The first chakra is Moses. Moses is the law, and the law abidingness. That's what helps us to get, get that balance. Where in ancient Egypt they said that the heart, the inner intent was weighed against the feather. And the feather was used to write the word so that man would have a remembrance. When he re remembers the senbet and he stops his occupational labor and he sets it apart to keep it, yetekedese, to keep it holy. So here in Orit Zefitret, which is the Ethiopic... Um, in the Royal Amharic Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9, um, and it reads, Ye noch tulit in dihno, noch himma betu leduas adekam, fitzumimaso nebere, noch aka he dun ka egezi abi hergara da rege. Now, there's something very interesting about this. It says when he was a just man, he was a sadik. He was Sadik, or he was a Zadok. He was a Zadok, or Sadik. Right? Then it says that Noch Akahe Dunaka Egezi Abe Heragara Derega. It says that Noch, his Akahe, his Akahe. Now, Akahe is very important. So there's two key words. There's two key words right here. It says that his Akahe, right? His Akahe. 
his it says that his walk, but it means a little something more than just his walking around. That's what we said. It wasn't like he was walking with him in the sense that many would think. Mm. This first word, he was, he was sadic, right? Um, usually you would see it like this. So this is not what the Amharic says, but so that you have a reference point. Z- Zadok, but really sadic. Then it says, Aka hey do right Aka hey and put that little um mark right there for that a hey there's a hidden y sound so it's a hey hey right and then you have do now the Jews say this word right here we'll write it here halaka halaka his halaka now in the New Testament of your Bibles. And make note of this, disciples, brothers, and sisters, that there's a word, it's translated usually as conversation. You know where it talks about how our conversation in Christ should be. Now, if you study that, conversation doesn't mean, well, how we talk in, hey, Christ, 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 Christ. No, it's not saying that. That can end you up in crisis if you're not grounded, rooted, you know. But it's saying that our, our, our walk, our process, how we're going about. Now, the Jews call this the halakha, halakha. We Ethiopic Hebrews, we call this akahed, the akahed. In the case of Noch, it was his akahed or akahedu. His akahedu was with, it was alongside, it was with God. You understand? And you remember what we touched on in the first part of this? We touched on the fact that that in the beginning was the Word, and the, and the Word was what? God? It was with God, and the Word was God. So it says that, Noch akahedun ka'egizi abhergar adarge. Now the key is adarge, is that adarge, and it's, it's interesting because a darga will be like the ashe you know, on another level of the Shemitic. You know, some who are into certain um, subsets of religion um, say ashe, meaning to do it, to make it. So we say a darga. So he made it with, alongside God. But Hashem is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And this is what made him perfect in his generation, both in his generation, generation lived with everybody else, and in his generation, in his begetting, and, and, and that kind of sense, that he was not, his seed, they were hybrids. Remember the Nephilim has fallen from the last Torah portion, uh, Bereshit, you understand, or Bermejimeria, that the Nephilim have fallen in the first part of uh, Genesis chapter 6. And then they also bred with the daughters of men. So they were hybrids. You know, so in other words, the DNA was messed up. This is when they, in a sense, engineered human being. The DNA was messed up. Now, if you go into what they call this again, um, mythology and Greek mythology, we talk about the titans and the giants and all the rest of that. That goes back to that period of, of time. All right? Now, here, when it says that Noah... He was a just man, and he was, there's another word that we didn't put up here, fitum. Fitum in, in, in ancient Egypt would be the pi tum, or tum. He was tum, T-U-M, or bamarinya tum, or tum, or tum. He was fitum. He was complete. He was perfect, complete in his generation. And the key is the last part of it where it says, and he walked with his, his akahed, his halaka, was with God. It was in the word of God. It was in the truth, the ma'at, we can say. It was, it was sadik. He was ma'at. It was in the truth of God. So how he used the word, how he thought, you understand, his heart. So if you weighed his heart against the feather, it would be balanced. You understand? It would be balanced. So... These are all some of the key links, because as we touch on the Ethiopic Noah, we'll find Noah right there, and Noah in, in Egyptian so-called 
wisdom or mysteries, Noah symbolically would be the Ankh man, the man of the Ankh. He was the life because he was the survivor. He lived. And his length of days, notice, remember, the, the, the root of, of Noch, Ethiopically, has to do with length, his length of days, you see. And this is all because of his relationship with the word, his relationship with the truth. He, even his, his feeling and his speaking but coming from his vibration, his vibration. So when we, as Rastafari, speak of words, sound, and power, when we used to speak of vibes, you know, when man and man used to vibes, they vibes this, vibes it. You don't hear man and man say vibes anymore. You know, so it's like we're not dealing with the vibes anymore. We're dealing with the eyes, you know, how things may seem and look and appear. And, and we're losing even our own vibration. So this is to once again get the vibration up to, up, to, up to the balance. Now, understanding that, all right, and, and get to the overstanding. Here, Noah, in the authorized version, Matthew 24 and 32, they spell his name very interesting. They spell it N-O-E. His name is spelled as N-O-E. So you'll find that in the New Testament, right? Now, Hebraically, Noah means rest. It means calm. It means quiet. It means peace. It means tranquility. And the last meaning that we have in, here in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, it means equilibrium. Remember we said about the ma'at, the balance, his heart versus the feather right there, that feather of truth. You understand? It is balanced. Now, he was a son of Lamech, quote, and he called his name Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us in our work and in the toil of our hands, which cometh because of the ground which Yahweh hath cursed. Now, we don't have the opportunity right here. Macy talks about it. There is Yahweh. There is the Yahweh of, um, of old. And that was ascribed to the, the motherhood side of God. And then we have the Yahweh of, of, of Moses, which is the Yahweh of, 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 of the fatherhood, which is, which is Christ there. And we, we have to touch on that in a little. Some might understand what we mean by that, but let's just keep this part on, on track right here. But that was Genesis 5 and 29. Now, why we say that? Because remember what Eve said? Eve said that when Cain was born, the murderer, remember the murderer? And perhaps the liar as well, when he was born, so his vibrations were real low. She said, Eve, the same one who was deceived at the tree, she said, she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, that is totally inexplicable. You'd be like, oh, I can't explain that really until the Moshia, our black Lord and Savior, says that ye are of your father. You understand? And he was a murderer from the beginning and bold not in truth. Who was that? That was Cain. But what did Eve say? I have gotten a man child from Yahweh. What Yahweh? What does Yahweh mean? He who is who he is, but reflective of Ehiya Shara Ehiya, I am that I am. So I am that I am points to ego. But what does Freud and modern psychology tell us of the ego? The Bible already told us, but people couldn't understand it then. But now we can use modern psychology and say, this is what the Bible is talking about, and then people can understand. Oh, it tells us that there is the ego, there is the superego, there is the id, there is the unconsciousness and all of that. And then we have the God consciousness. Then we have a higher a truly higher consciousness that we now, being in the lower conscious, seeks to approximate or, in, in no sense, walk with in spirit and in truth. So we want to make, make that known because the ground was cursed because Jehovah cursed the ground, but understand the Jehovah link right there by looking at what Eve said. Eve said, I have gotten a man-child of who? Of Yahweh, Jehovah. 
But when Abel was born, she didn't say anything. Now, Christ, the Bible, the prophets tell us that Abel, or Abel, Abel, was the righteous. But she didn't say nothing about it because she could not perceive that because of her low the, her vibration. And th th that's when motherhood, the vibration of motherhood, was greatly challenged like it is in these prophetic times as well these days of Noah. Now, Noah built an ark in which he and his family were later saved during the flood, Genesis 6 and 8 to Genesis 9 and 29. Now, there was another Noah, or Noah. Now, this other Noah of the same name was one of the daughters of Zelophehad. Zelophehad. There was one named Zelophehad. He was a Manassehite who had no sons and whose inheritance went to his five daughters. So also the count of the sexism that some of these uh, so-called femaleist feminists like to ascribe to the Bible and confuse even the Rastafari and the Ethiopian Hebrew woman with. Notice there's these five daughters. The inheritance went to the sons, and we can explain the reasons why the inheritance went to the sons. A little interesting point, Queen of England and England now, they, they've changed their whole laws of prejun. Uh, um, um, primogenerator or generator, it, so it could go to the sons or daughters, and a, a lot of confusion there as well. You understand? But in the case of the daughters of Zelophehad, who was a Manasseh who had no sons, the inheritance went to the daughters. Why? Because the daughters were able to, they understood the word and the law, and they made the case. See, those women were on the consciousness to recognize what God's justice is, and they were able to handle that inheritance and to keep it in the family. Because when a woman would marry a man in those times outside of her tribe, it would, the land would go to the defenders of the land, and that would be the male side. So if the man, if the man had no daughters, that inheritance could leave the lineage and could leave the line of that, of that male. So it's kind of very important to understand that relation, why the inheritance did not go to the daughters before, because coming out of Egypt, the daughters were incapable in the initial stages, because Egypt had fallen, it was corrupt. That Egypt, not all Egypt's. Just a little note right there. So this is Numbers chapter 26, verse 33. Not what we're dealing with, but Numbers 27 and 7, Numbers 36 and 11. This is just the intro. This is just the beginning of the metaphysical overstanding of Noah. So please stay tuned, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Rastafari.